don't have what it takes to be an actual speedrunner, so in order to get a world record, I just have to do something that no one has ever thought of before. And that's why we're going to see how long it takes to collect a Great Ball in every mainline Pokemon game, starting with Pokemon Red for the Game Boy. Pokemon Red and Blue is a fairly straightforward one. There's a Great Ball hidden on Route 4, just outside of Mount Moon, so all we have to do is get there. Let's start off by taking Squirtle as our starter, naming it A, and then changing a bit of settings. In Pokemon Red and Blue, as well as every single Pokemon game today, naming our own character and our own Pokemon a single letter will slowly save time as it takes time to display each character. Also setting the tech speed to fast, the battle animation to off, and the battle style to set, this will save us time in our journey to gather those Great Balls. After making our way through Route 1, we end up making our way into the Viridian Forest, which could cause us some trouble since we can get poisoned and die. But thankfully, Pokemon Red is an old game, so we can just manipulate the encounters fairly easily and walk right through the entire forest. Once in Pewter City, now we have to face off against Brock, the Pewter City Gym Leader. We defeat him pretty easily with our Squirtle that we so carefully selected, and then make our way to Route 3, where we have to face off against a handful of trainers. And at this point in the game, most speedrunners will grab a Nidoran, but since we are almost at our prize, we can skip that entirely and head into Mount Moon. Mount Moon can also take a ton of time due to all the random encounters, but as mentioned before, Pokemon Red is a really old game. So we can just walk through, face off against the only difficult opponent of the run, and grab our fossil and head outside. Once outside, back on Route 4, we take a couple of steps to the east, head onto this suspiciously placed platform, and find our hidden Great Ball placed right in the middle. On to Pokemon Gold and Silver, where things are no longer that straightforward. There are two potential Great Balls that we can get very early. One is on the safe route on Route 32, hiding in some grass, and the second one is from our mom. In Pokemon Gold and Silver, we can let our mom take care of our money, and once we reach a certain amount of money, our mom will spend it on some goodies. She can buy us some potions or even a bunch of dolls, but under a very specific circumstance, if our mom cannot afford any of her normally purchased items, she may randomly purchase us a Great Ball. But we have to meet a really strange condition. Our savings has to be an exact multiple of 2,300 Poke Dollars, and then the Great Ball still is just a 20% chance of being bought. And that seems like way too much prep and way too much hassle to try and figure out, so Route 32 it is. We grab Totodile as our starter, head all the way across town to grab an egg for Professor Elm, while on our way back face off against our rival, and then head back to Professor Elm to give him his egg. We then say our final goodbye to our mother and head to the first gym in Violet City. Once in Violet City, the Great Ball is just south on Route 32, but we aren't allowed to pass unless we can prove our worth by obtaining the first gym badge. Thanks to Totodile learning Rage, we can start building up our damage on the gym leader Faulkner's Pidgey and then take care of his Pidgeotto fairly quickly. We then make our way south, wrap around some trees in the tall grass, we then run from a wild Mareep and get our second Great Ball. Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire is another pretty straightforward one. The best options for getting the Great Ball are to purchase it from the Pokemart in Petalburg or by defeating a Team Magma Grunt in the Petalburg Woods. Sadly, the Petalburg Pokemart will only sell us a Great Ball if we have at least four gym badges, which would take forever, so the woods it is. We start off by getting Mudkip as our starter, walking all the way up Route 101 and 103 so we can face off against our rival, beat him, and then walk all the way back down to Professor Birch's lab. And I'm beginning to see a pattern of walking very far to a place and immediately having to walk all the way back down, but at least this time, we can just dump down a bunch of ledges. And after talking to Professor Birch, we get the single most useful item to get us those Great Balls. Our mom gives us our running shoes. We head back up Route 101, head west towards Route 102, face off against a couple of trainers, and arrive in Petalburg City, where we can head into the Pokemart. We try to sweet talk the cashier into selling us some of those Great Balls, because we know he has some, but we get denied and just get some repels instead. We then talk to our dad, meet up with Wallace, who teaches us how to catch a Pokemon, and then make our way to Route 104. After dodging all of the trainers in Route 104 and Petalburg Woods, we find a scared and confused Devon Corporation employee who is getting bullied by a Team Magma Grunt. We defeat his Poochiana and get a Great Ball as our reward. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl is another straightforward Great Ball. Every single Pokemart will sell us a Great Ball, but we have to have at least three gym badges. So, the first one that we can get otherwise is from a boy in a house in Ouroburg City. So we steal Chimchar out of a briefcase, convince the professor to let us keep it, and similar to all the games prior, we walk to a city, immediately walk all the way back home just to talk to our mom, and then head right back to where we came from. Before leaving Sand Gym Town, we grab a couple of potions so that we won't have to stop at Poke Centers to heal up, learn how to catch a Pokemon, and then head to Jubilife City. We then head into the trainer's school to defeat a couple of students, teach our Chimchar ancient power, and then have to find some clowns. 
We find three clowns hiding throughout the city who also ask us trivia questions in exchange for coupons, and then we head east to face off against our rival Lucas. Lucas has a Starly and a Piplup, but thanks to our Chimchar learning ancient power, is a breeze to defeat. We then weave our way past some trainers in the Orberg Gate, head into the city and run all the way to the easternmost building, head upstairs, talk to some kid who strangely compliments our Pokemon's eyes, but either way, he gives us a great ball. On to Pokemon Black and White, where we have to deal with a little thing called Pickup. Pickup is an ability that only a few specific Pokemon can have, but what the ability does is that after winning a fight, a Pokemon with Pickup has a 10% chance of creating a held item for itself, even if it didn't participate in the battle. And for Pokemon Black and White specifically, Lillipup can be caught on Route 1, and Lillipup at the level we catch it has a 10% chance of any picked up item to be a Great Ball. So if we have one Lillipup on our team, each fight we win, we have a 1% chance of getting a Great Ball. And before anyone goes, but the pickup ability was introduced in Gen 3, and Zigzagoon can be caught on Route 101, and Zigzagoon has the pickup ability, so why wasn't that an option in Ruby and Sapphire? The pickup drop table for Ruby and Sapphire does not contain a Great Ball. Only until Pokemon Emerald was the Great Ball added. And in Diamond and Pearl, no pets in the early routes had the pickup as an ability. So in order to test our luck, we're going to try the consistent method, which is the Great Ball located in Striatin City, and then the pickup method on Route 1. For both methods, we start off by grabbing Snivy, talk to Professor Juniper, and head to Route 1. Our very first Lillipup encounter is at 10 minutes on the dot, so when we start trying the pickup method, we will pick up where we left off there. But for the consistent method, we keep heading north into Accumula Town, listen to some weird cult going on about something in the park circle, meet our potential rival in, and continue towards Striaden City. Right before entering, we're stopped by Bianca for a battle, beat her Lillipup in Oshawott, and head into the city. Stratton actually has two Great Balls, but the easiest one is to go into the very first house on the right, talk to the first person we see, and get our Great Ball. Now let's see how fast the pickup method compares. This timer's not taking into account the 10 minutes that it took to get to this point, but the only strategy is to get a team full of Lily Pups and then continuously encounter and defeat Pokemon on Route 1. With extreme luck, this is much faster than the Great Ball in Striatin Town, but with expected luck, we can get the Great Ball after 10 minutes plus 27 minutes and 40 seconds. Pokemon X and Y has two Pokemon with the pickup ability on the first route, but as statistics have shown, we're gonna be going with the better option and go with the consistent route. We start off by grabbing brunch with our best friends where we talk about how Great Balls are our favorite type of Pokeballs, grab our starter Chespin, defeat our new rival, and head back to our mom before departing to get our quickest Great Ball yet. We head past Route 2 into Stanaloon Forest, face off against Anna, and head off to Stanaloon City, where our beloved Great Ball is awaiting behind the Poke Center in a house. We talk to the kid and get our Great Ball. Pokemon Sun and Moon really hates Great Balls. At the very start of the game, we head out of our house at two minutes and 24 seconds to a fork in the road. We are then forced to head to the right, but if only we could just keep going straight, a beautiful Great Ball is only a couple of footsteps away. But instead, Professor sends us on one grand adventure of the Alola region. We talk to some trainers, see some Pokemon, head into Icky Town, and see some mysterious girl walking into the woods. We then decide that the right course of action is to follow said girl into the dark and scary woods, only to find her Pokemon being attacked by a bunch of birds. We then white knight ourselves into the situation, save her Pokemon, and nearly die doing so, only to be saved by Tapu Koko. After whatever just happened, we made our way back to the city, grab our starter Poplio, and face off against our rival. We then once again get teased by the great ball to our left, are forced to go to the right, and make our way through another entire route of Pokemon before arriving at the same city as before. We then for some reason face off against our rival again after we just defeated him, head back home for the third time, and then finally go to grab our award. Nope, just kidding. You see that same place to the left? The Great Ball is right there. But first we have to go down here and talk to the professor once more. And after being teased for the third time, after talking to the professor, we can head to the school, avoid all of the students, and grab the Great Ball on the battlefield. Once reaching Pokemon Sword and Shield, the pickup ability no longer rewards Great Balls, so even though it hasn't been the best option of any of the previous games, it isn't even possible now. Unlike all the previous games, Sword and Shield doesn't have the pointless walking back and forth three or four times, but instead we just have to deal with Hop, who is our best friend rival guy who just really likes to talk. We start Sword and Shield by going to Hop's house, and then we head to Wedgehurst, where we meet the champion Leon. We then grab our starter Sobble, defeat Hop who already has two Pokemon for some reason, and then head into the slumbering weld. 
And at this point, Pokemon also quit caring about the legendaries on the box being these amazing, elusive creatures, and we run into the legendary sword dog within the first 15 minutes of the game. But don't worry, its name has a bunch of question marks just to keep us eager with curiosity. We then beat the sword dog Zacian, get found by Leon, and make our way back to Wedgehurst. Once in Wedgehurst, we learn that we have to go talk to the professor, so we head to Route 2, avoid as many trainers as we can, and finally arrive at Magnolia's. We head inside, talk to Magnolia, leave immediately, run to the left heading over to her greenhouse, and grab the Great Ball sitting outside. Now on to Pokemon Scarlet Violet, which is the biggest Great Ball tease. In Sun and Moon, we knew the Great Ball was to the left, but we were forced to go elsewhere. But in Scarlet and Violet, all we have to do is wake up in our house, talk to our mom about our first day of school, and then win our battle with our starter Fucoco. After that, there's a Great Ball in the very first area, right next to Nimona's house, only it's right on top of this hill, which we can't get until later on in the game, but there's no reason to come back here, so it's just sitting up there for no one to ever get. So instead of being done just 14 minutes in, we have to get our sandwich from our mom, learn how to catch a Pokemon from Nimona, nearly die falling off a cliff, feed a winged beast our only sandwich, follow said beast through a spooky cavern full of Houndor, get whisked away out of the cavern, head to a lighthouse, and then run a country mile all the way through South Providence just to find a huge cliff and on top it, our final Great Ball. And that's how long it takes to get a Great Ball in every Pokemon game from slowest to fastest. As long as no one is dumb enough to do this for themselves, it's a world record that I'll hold proud. Thanks for watching.